So I finally got my Pixel 7. And after going through the setup process, there were five things that I immediately changed. Some features, I honestly think Google should just ship the phone with them on, but let's get into it. First of all, battery percentage. I think every phone needs to give us the exact battery percentage. Apple, for some reason, removed that feature with their iPhones previously. Now they have it again. The Pixel also has it, but it's off by default. Not sure why it is, but go into your settings, go into battery, and slide that battery percentage to on. Maybe I'm just weird, but I need that battery percentage up there. It just makes a big difference for me. Next is security features. The Pixel 7 has face unlock, which is great. And honestly, it does work well, but it doesn't work in the dark, which is kind of frustrating. I thought I was gonna be able to just use face unlock and not have to use that fingerprint sensor, but I quickly went into the settings, then security, then to face and fingerprint unlock, and I also added fingerprint unlock. Otherwise, at night or in a dark room, you're gonna have to enter a pin every time that face unlock can't pick up your face. Now you can either use face unlock or the fingerprint sensor, and good news, at least first impressions, the fingerprint sensor seems to be much quicker and reliable than on the Pixel 6. Now, while I was setting up the phone and downloading applications, I noticed it was automatically adding those app icons to the home screen. I personally cannot stand when Android does that. And if you're like me, hold down anywhere on the home screen, click home settings and turn off add app icons to home screen. Now all the apps you download won't start to just pop up and make a cluttery mess on your home screens. Instead, you can just add the apps that you actually want. Also, bonus feature. There's a setting there in the home settings that says allow home screen rotation. Set that to on and now when you rotate your phone, you have the option to also rotate the home screen. Not something huge or game changing, but it can definitely be a useful feature. Next, swipe down on your notification panel and then swipe down again so you can get to your quick action panel. Then click the edit button at the bottom right. You're going to see a bunch of options not added by default. Things like alarm, hotspot, screencast are all there. You even have some third party application quick actions all the way at the bottom. So hold down the one that you want to add, move it to the top. You can even rearrange the tiles and put the most used ones on the very first page. I just found that there was a lot of quick actions not there by default that you had to actually manually add. So I quickly just rearranged all of those tiles and the experience was much better. And finally, Google doesn't have the always on display set to on by default. Not sure if it's because they want to have the best battery life possible when that consumer opens up the package and starts using the phone. Obviously, always on display is going to affect the battery life, but it's something that I definitely turned on right away. So go into your settings, then display, then lock screen. Then you scroll to always show time and info. Set that to on. And now you have the Pixel always on display, which gives you the time, the date, and a lot of other useful information at a glance. So far, I'm really impressed with the Pixel 7. It seems like Google has really improved all the negative things about the Pixel 6 with the Pixel 7 this year. The back camera bump has kind of grown on me. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the metal instead of glass over the camera sensors. At least in the pictures and the video that I saw, I wasn't a really big fan of it, but I'm starting to like it a lot more now. It's much nicer in person. Battery life looks solid. Of course, it's still really early and more will come on that in the full review, but it seems like the Tensor G2 is performing great so far. I think that the size of the Pixel 7 is also great. The 6.3 inch display is big enough but the phone still feels compact and easy to use with one hand. I honestly wish that Google would have given us the Pixel 7 Pro features in a more compact size like the Pixel 7. I went with the Pixel 7 over the Pixel 7 Pro simply because of that price tag low. $599 for a Pixel 7 
is a fantastic deal. And I wanted to see how great of a deal it actually was. So I went with the Pixel 7 over the Pixel 7 Pro. So far, it looks like a steal, but we'll see how it holds up as time goes on. If you don't wanna miss my full review of the Pixel 7, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos, and I'll see you on the next one.